And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. There's a sad town somewhere in the world, and that's where this game takes place. Because in this town, there's apparently four or five mad scientists all trying to build some Frankenstein-style monster that is going to come down and terrorize the village. It would be irritating enough, I think, to have one of these guys around. That five of them around, and then these guys are competing in town to get your brains and steal them from the morgue and the cemeteries, and ah, leave already! Move into a new place! Good help. Great theme. You are Dr. Frankenstein, or one of his compatriots. You are going to hire people to help you. These people are going to have different stats. You're basically hiring Igor, although also in this game is Igor. It's your choice. You can hire either one. Um, and many other people. You're hiring two of these people to help you. And these people are going to go around town and get different things for you, do deliveries for you to get the parts for the monster that you need so that you can then therefore build your monster. Meanwhile, you have to go to town and get a mundane job and do that and then come back, eventually build your monster, he marches down the town, destroys buildings, you win. Great theme! Good ideas! Game isn't terrible, but definitely doesn't live up to the theme. Let's look at it and see why. Okay, I love the thinking of this game. Here's this town in the middle of nowhere, and we have different castles that are around the board of mad scientists. I mean, who wants to live in this town? But hey, go figure, people do. And so at the beginning of the game, you're gonna take out different buildings like the zoo, and here's the stables, and we got the university, and you'll put them on the board. And then players will enter a bidding phase where they're gonna bid for some assistance. Here you got Oleg and Bertha. You need to get one male and one female assistance. Vladimir and Misha. And of course, uh, we have Igor. Did you say I pronounced his name incorrectly? That's because this game also includes Igor. It's up to you which one you want to use. Now, each of these guys has different stats on them. They have a movement stat. They have how much money they cost. They have a brain value. But they also have a special ability maybe, but they also have some vices. Now what that means is, as these, these assistants, and each assistant has a little token, as they're running around town here, at the beginning of the game you're going to put these little tokens, which are almost too small, on different stores. And so if your assistant, for example, has a vice for clothing, every time he passes that store he has to roll a die, and if he rolls less than a number on his vice, he's going to go inside that store and basically stop moving on his turn. Okay, that's a neat concept. I like that a lot. Um, you know, here we have uh, Igor, and he's fine, except when he passes a pub or he wants to get something to eat. While Leela, she's very useful, but at the same time, if she passes a jewelry store, forget it. Now, the game does come with a mechanic that if you do go into one of these stores, uh, you'll take the card of that store, so the next time you walk by, you can forget about it. You say, well, I'm, I would go in for a drink, but I'm already all drunk up. So what are you doing? You have three characters as the game begins. You have your mad scientist, you have your male assistant, and then you have your female assistant. And you're going to be running them around the board. Your female assistant is running around picking up supplies and going around and slapping other females. Your male assist assistant is going around and getting body parts. Now there's different graveyards around the town. You can see one here, and there's one over there, and one over here. You can even go to the zoo and get gorilla body parts. And as you get these body parts, you'll see there are different types. Here we got limbs and brains. And here's a torso, which has NSF. That means not so fresh. And so you can get these different body parts, and you'll trying to get them and the different supplies that your female uh, assistant is going to bring back to your castle to build your monster. Now, once you have your monster ready to go, he's going to walk around town and destroy buildings. But the problem is, when you get these body parts, you're most likely going to have to either dig them up from the graveyards, which isn't so useful, or go into the morgue and buy them from a, or from the zoo, from someone unethical. So it's likely that your professor is going to have to go work, and there's different spots that he can go to the board. He might go lecture at the university, or go work at the hospital. There's different areas where he has a legitimate job. And then in the meantime, you'll be drawing event cards. There's an empty grave, or a cudgel when your one male assistant tacks another male assistant, or a lightning storm hits the town. 
And so there's a lot of different things going on. But once you have your monster, you go around and blow up as many buildings as you can. Maybe another guy blows up buildings. You use the strength of your monster as the different pieces you put the body together with. You know, how powerful they are. And the monster that destroys all the buildings first, or the most buildings, is the winner of the game. Theming of this game is great. I love the idea of several mad scientists all building a Frankenstein. In fact, the theming of this game reminds me very similar to Monsters Ravage America or Monsters Menace America, whatever version you have, where it almost all comes down to the monster slowly lumbering into town, destroying buildings right and left. Okay, that, that's interesting and fun. And the idea of male and female assistants with different vices that they, that, you know, they have troubles with, that's also fun and interesting. The game breaks down a little bit, though, when it comes to the movement. You're rolling dice for movement. And you roll, and I run, oh, I can only go a few spaces this turn. And he rolls, and he goes a few more spaces. And this is where we run into uh, what, we, what I consider a problem, the same problem I have a clue, where the game is a good game, but why have this rolling of dice to move around the board? Good Help has the same thing. And also, Good Help seems, even though it isn't that slow of a game, seems to move a little bit slower than I'd want it to. You want to be running around, and it want to be excitement, um, and you would say, oh, I'm going to send my mail assistant after his mail assistant. Well, I can't. He has a good head start on me, and no matter how I run through the city, I'm not going to catch him. All that being said, it's not a bad game. It's good-ish, and the theme is great. So you may want to check it out, okay? The, 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 you may want to try it out just for theme alone, and I certainly would not be telling you no against that because more games need to come out with themes like this. The title is awesome. The idea is all about using the right assistance. And I love that there's even a rule in the game where if you know someone else's monster has been built, in an act of desperation, you can try and use the brain of your male assistant to build your monster. Of course, you have to roll, and if you fail, he kills you. But hey, what if you have nothing to lose? So the idea, the components, I mean, the, the artwork, everything looks really good in that regard. Uh, I just think there should be a little bit more uh, beyond that... Uh, that rolling of the dice, although I love dice, dice tower, woo! Um, in this game, it kind of bogs down a little bit, and there comes points where you're like, all right, here goes my guy off to work again, trying to get some money so I can go back and buy this, but right when I get there, someone plays an event card, and yes, that's all interesting and fun maybe for that player, but it just becomes a little bit of a drudgery for me. But hey, what do I know? I've not been a mad scientist, so I'm not sure if this is a good simulation or not, but it, it certainly is a game that you might want to at least take a look at. Thanks for joining us today. For more written, audio, and video reviews, as well as the number one board game podcast, check out the website at www.thedicetower.com. Until then, this is Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.